Salutations, respected viewers. This is George from Ireland. So here I am at uh, Valence Road, London. This is in an area of the east end of London called Bethnal Green. And at this site, there stood a house, which was number 179 Valence Road. And this is where the Cray twins grew up. Ronnie Cray and Reggie Cray, and indeed their elder brother, Charlie. They formed the Cray uh, gang, which uh, dominated the underworld north of the River Thames in the 50s and 60s. So um, the Crays, well, they were born here in um, 1935, and uh, their father was on the run in the Second World War to avoid military service. They were raised by their mother, Violet, to whom they were, with whom they were incredibly close. Um, but they got into petty crime in their early teens. Um, other thing, notable things about them is that uh, Ronnie Cray was homosexual, as uh, he writes in his autobiography. Uh, Reggie Cray was straight. Um, so pretty soon they were into protection rackets rather than um, theft um, or robbery. So shopkeepers, restaurateurs and so on would be paying for their protection. They did offer a genuine service as well, but um, people were paying over the odds for it rather than relying on the police. It's a working class area um, and uh, people um, didn't always trust the police entirely who were sometimes on the take as well. What else about them? Well, they were called up for national service in 1953 and they absconded almost immediately assaulting the sergeant. They were arrested here the next day, brought back to the police, blah, blah, blah. And the army just couldn't control them, even in the military prison. And uh, national servicemen, as in people who have been forced to be soldiers, are supposed to be guarding them, but the craze really dominated. And so the army just washed its hands of them and they returned here. So they, they've demolished the craze house. It's, it's not as it looks now. They called it the Fort the Craze, and the local council did that deliberately over 20 years ago so that there could be no gathering place for those who still adulate the Craze. Um, they then own nightclubs like Esmeralda's Barn in, in um, Knightsbridge that um, Bruce Reynolds used to frequent, and they mixed with the great and the good Barbara Windsor, Diana Dawes, Lord Boothby who had a question asked in the House of Lords on their behalf, they were charged with offences such as taking money with menaces. So um, they were fearless, but uh, they were mentally unstable. They're things they could laugh off, they're things that could make them kill you. Just depends on what sort of a mood they were in. The Richardson uh, gang, they dominated London south of uh, the River Thames. Um, so notable events in the downfall of the craze. Well, um, uh, Jack the Hack Vitti, the murder of him, one of the... Uh, uh, Richardson gang, George Cornell, uh, again of the Richardson gang who came here, well north of the river, went into a pub, the um, Blind Beggar, about a mile from here, and saw Ronnie Cray and called him a fat puff. And uh, Ronnie Cray writes in his autobiography that he shot him dead for it. Um, so uh, McVitie, he'd also been paid to kill someone. He kept the money but not carried out the hit, so he was killed for that. Then there was Frank Mitchell. Mitchell was a uh, a uh, robber who was imprisoned in Dartmoor, so southwest England, and the, the people felt that his sentence was too harsh. The Craigs wanted to help him out, so they went down there, they rescued him. Mitchell was part of the honour party, allowed to work outside the prison grounds for hours unsupervised, and the Craigs, they, they helped uh, rescue him, take him away by car. He brought a knife with him, but they chucked that out because they said, we want to claim that you're not committing any acts of violence. Well, the point is, hide out in London, write to the Home Secretary, have your sentence reduced, then, then give yourself up. Well, that didn't work. He was uncontrollable. He was a man who was frighteningly strong, could pick up the prison guards. So the prison guards had to humour him. They couldn't control him, and then he would cooperate. So they found, they found a woman to entertain him, and he was bonking her for a week or so. But eventually, he was more than they could handle, and he felt he was virtually imprisoned in London, worse than he had been in Dartmoor. So he was shot dead. Quite by whom is unclear, but Freddie Form is, is amongst those, and Albert Donoghue helped dispose of the body. So that was that. In 1968, um, Nipper Reid had finally built a case against them. He was someone who worked for Scotland Yard. So um, Nipper, Reid, Nipper Reid was able to have him arrested. They call him Nipper because he's unusually short for a policeman. There used to be a height requirement for police officers. But he got in just after the Second World War when that was relaxed because of the shortage of policemen. Anyway, Leonard Nipper Reid had them charged with murder and they were both sent down for murder. And the judge at their trial said that society has earned arrest for humor activities. So that was that. They're both given life. Um, uh, one of them was diagnosed as mentally ill, was in Broadmoor, a psychiatric hospital for the criminally insane. So one of them uh, died in 1995, the other one died in 2001. Uh, one of them was given benevolent parole shortly before he passed away. They were allowed out to their mother Violet's funeral in 1981, uh, handcuffed to the tallest prison officers they could find. 
The Crays felt this humiliating because it made them look small. Charlie Cray was released a bit earlier, he wasn't convicted of murder. But then in 97, he was sent back into prison for cocaine dealing, where indeed he died. So that was the craze, and many East Enders, Enders were nostalgic about them, saying, oh, it was much better when Ronnie and Reggie were around, they were good to their mother, and that's what the East Enders all about. And they, were, they didn't deal in drugs, and so on, well, Charlie did right at the end. And it is true that crime became much worse after them, partly because they were the only criminals around. They couldn't be serious crime because they wouldn't permit it, only they were allowed to rob. So that's the craze, and it is staggering the way they're adulated, these violent criminals who did not serve the public, who only cared about themselves, who ripped people off an awful lot, and uh, were particularly brutal. So it's a myth to say, oh, they never hurt nice people like you. I heard Frankie Fraser say that, despite him being in the richest of the gang. So they only hurt other gangsters, which again is not true. Um, so that is that, the Cray twins.